Hey there, my name is Kelly Dale with Off The Beaded Path and today is Thursday, November 26, 2020. So if you're in the United States, then you know what this day is. It is Thanksgiving Day. So I wanna wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. So my Thanksgiving gift to you is to do a brand new video on this fun needle case holder. So we are gonna learn how to take a wooden needle case like this and bead a beautiful cover for it that is gonna completely transform the look of your piece. Now, there's a couple of things that you need to know about your wooden needle case. First, there are two sizes of cases and there's two types of cases. So the first case is a shorter case. So it only comes up to about right here. It's specifically made for your sharps or your short needles, okay? The second case is this size here. <clears throat> it's a little over three inches in height. Um, it's a really, really nice case for your beading needles. So it's really good to hold your longer needles that are gonna be specifically used for beading or sewing. Okay, so that's what we're gonna use today. We're using the longer case. And the next thing you need to know is the two types of cases. So one case is called a flush case. So a flush case means that the top is flush with what I call the body. So that just means the top is the exact same diameter as your case. The one we're gonna be using today is not flush. That means that the top here is a little bit bigger than the actual case, okay? So these non flush cases don't work well for some of the patterns that you find online for other needle cases. And it's mainly because the top does not work out the same way. The body does, just not the top. So I thought, well, we need to make a needle case cover for it. So that's what we're doing. So we are using a non-flush longer case today. Now I do sell these on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Now I have two different patterns for these again on my website. I have what I call a floral case and I have a chevron case. Okay, today I'm gonna be showing you a solid color because I know that some people um, don't necessarily like a pattern, so I'm gonna show a solid color. But know that I have the word charts and graphs for both of these, again, on my website. So the really great thing about these covers, they're great stash busters because um, like if you use this floral one, you need a good many colors, but there's only a little bit of each that you need. So again, really great stash busser. The other great thing about these is they're wonderful gifts. So they're great gifts for beaters or um, your friends who sew or anything like that. Another good thing about having an actual case on top of your wooden holder is the fact that if you're with some friends beating, being careful and social distancing, of course, um, you can't get your little things messed up because each person maybe would have a different one. So think about this as a great gift as well. So here's what you're gonna need today. You are going to need, um, if you're gonna do the one color, you're gonna need several grams of a size 11 Delica. Now these patterns were written specifically for Delicas. So if you try to use a regular size 11 seed bead, it's not going to work out. Of course, you're gonna need your needle case. You're gonna need a needle of your choice. I like to use a size 10 or a 12, completely up to you. And you are gonna need some thread. So you can use some six pound fire line, you can use your 1G, your NAMO, whatever you want to use. The other thing that I'm gonna use, it's gonna be a little bit different from other people's needle cases, is I'm gonna be using a 14 millimeter flat cabochon. So the cabochon has a flat bottom, and a very rounded top, okay? So it's a 14 millimeter. This is gonna go in the very top of our needle case. So go ahead and get your materials together and let's get started. Okay, so a little bit more about what we're making today. So this is an up close version here of what we're doing. This is the floral case with the top and you can see the top comes off here. And then the bottom, this bottom piece is gonna be completely separate from our piece here. And you see it kinda has a star shape, so it's really cool. So there's that one, and then this is the chevron one, and you can see it's not finished on the top or the bottom so that I can show you actually how to finish out the pattern. Now, 
Let's talk a little bit more about the case. The case itself, as you can see here against the ruler, is three and a half inches long. Now, if I give you a little up close version here, you can see that the top of this case is a little bit bigger than the body of the case. That's why it's not flush, okay? So just be aware of that as you are looking for the case because this top will not work on a flush top, okay? That's the biggest thing you wanna be aware of. So you're gonna have to add lots of thread as you work. You're probably gonna need about eight to 10 total yards of thread as you do your needle case holder. The great thing is it's super easy, no matter if you do a pattern, you do one um, color, whatever you wanna do, but you are going to start with 36 size 11 delicate beads, okay? Whether it be an A, a B, whatever. So like in this one, you start with 36 A's and this specific pattern, your A is the lime green or this chartreuse color, okay? So with, I've got two yards, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna thread on 36 A beads or size 11 seed beads. Now, once you get your 36 on here, double count and make sure you have 36. Okay, so I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, and 36. Okay, so I do have that 36. Now I'm gonna bring these down and I'm gonna leave myself just about a three inch tail here. And I'm gonna go back through all these beads one more time. So from my little short tail, I'm gonna come all the way back up through. Okay, and if you can't get through all of them at one time, that is fine, no worries. Go through what you can go through at a time. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to slide this onto my case, and now I'm gonna pull the thread tight, and I'm going to tie these two threads together. Make sure you put it on the case before you do this, because if you do it, and it is too tight, and you've already tied your thread and all that kind of stuff, you pretty much have to take it off and, and take it apart and do it again, okay? So just make sure, especially if you're a tight stitcher, if you are a tight stitcher, you are going to have um, definitely easier time putting it on the case itself. So you can see here now, I have my tail and my working thread in the same exact position. And I'm gonna take my needle and I'm going to start in one direction. So if I'm right-handed, I'm going to start to the right. If I'm left-handed, I'm gonna start to the left, okay? It doesn't matter which direction I start, just whichever way I start, I have to continue in that direction the entire time. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through one bead here next to the knot, and now I'm ready to start the actual peyote stitch. Okay, so you can see my thread is coming out of this bead here. To do tubular peyote and even regular peyote, we pick up one bead, we skip one bead, and we go through the next bead. So I'm coming out here, I'm going to skip this bead and I'm gonna go through the next bead. And when I do, I'm just gonna pop and make sure that that bead lays up like that. So again, I pick up one bead, I'm coming out of a bead, I skip a bead and then I go through the next bead. And again, when I pull it, 
I'm going to push that bead up just like that. Pick up a bead, I'm coming out of a bead, skip a bead, and go through the next bead. Now again, if you are a tight stitcher, this is gonna be so awesome for you to be able to work on the tube. And you can also kind of push it up like this so that you've got something to hang on to. It's completely up to you. Um, just as you work, you'll just need to slide it, slide it to wherever you need it, basically. As you work, it's gonna be a little loose on your thing. And that's okay, it will slide. We're gonna do something um, that will help it not to slide once you get the complete length of your piece done here. So again, all I'm doing is I'm just picking up one bead. I am coming out of a bead, I'm skipping one, and I'm going through one. Now, if you're following a pattern, like if you're following this pattern, you will actually have specific beads that you will have to pick up for that row. Okay, so it's always very important to make sure that the new beads that you are adding go up or you make sure that they are focused all the way up. Because if you notice, let me do this one here again. If you notice, when you pull it, it almost kind of wants to stay down like this. So you want to make sure that you pull it up just like that. <clears throat> Your new beads should be sticking up. So this is what we're getting so far. Okay, and again, I know I keep harping on it, but make sure that thread stays, or your new beads stay sticking up. Because especially if you're following a pattern, when you come to the next row, if that bead is not where it's at and you go through the wrong bead, that bead will be in the wrong place and you're going to see it in your pattern. And you're going to have to take it back out. So we're just going to work around our little wooden case here um, that's doubling as our dowel. We're just going to continue to work around until we get back here to the beginning. And at this point, if you're using a size 10 needle like I am, if you are a tight stitcher, you are going to be having a hard time getting the beads through these last few beads because you've pulled the thread tight. Now, if you're not having trouble pulling it through, no worries. You're not doing anything wrong. It's just like I said, some of us tight, you know, stitch tighter than others, and that's completely fine. So I am back here. I only have one more bead left to add for my row. So when I add this bead, I'm coming out here. I'm going to skip this bead and go through this bead. So don't try to come through this top bead. We need to finish our row. So again, I'm coming out here. I'm going to skip this bead and go through this bead. Okay. Now I just wanna try to go through just that single bead. If you're not got pulled up into the bead, you can kind of pull your tail thread, your short tail thread, and you may be able to get your needle through the bead. If you can't, then this is where you'll want to switch to a little bit of a smaller needle. So let me go ahead and do that because I definitely do not want, to, definitely do not want to bust this um, bead here. So give me just a minute and I'm going to switch to a size 12 needle. Okay, so I have switched now to my size 12 needle. Oh, much, much, much better. So now, let me get this little tail thread out here. Well, wherever that thread went. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of hold this tail thread to the side 
and once I pull it, now you have one complete row with all your little teeth. So now I am coming out of this bead here. So we need to step up. So to do the step up, I'm gonna come through the very next bead right above where my thread is. So I'm just gonna come to this bead here and go through this one. Now every row that you do, this step up bead is gonna move over one bead, okay? So this is where I started. My step up is here. So when I come to the next row, my step up is gonna be the bead that um, I have here that I'm fixing to add in. So this time, instead of picking up one and skipping one, we're gonna pick up one and we're gonna go through the next bead sticking up on the row. So I have my one bead and I'm just gonna go through the next bead that's sticking up there on this row. And you can see now how that pops into place. So the great thing is, now all you have to do is pick up your bead, whether it's a plain color bead like I have here, or a pattern like I have showed you earlier. All you have to do is pick up your correct bead and go through the next bead sticking up, okay? So I'm gonna work this round and then we're gonna do the step up. The great thing if you do one color, it kind of seems like it goes a little bit quicker because you're not having to look at a pattern. So whether you do one color and then you fade into another color or whatever you want to do, it's just really nice because again, you're not having to look at a pattern and you can just kind of go to town and stitch away. So something you can do while you're in front of the TV, maybe watching your Hallmark Christmas movies, or um, if you're like my friend Richard, watching horror movies, you know, whatever you want to do, just stitching right along. And you can see here, I'm already almost back to the beginning where I started my row. All right, so I am already back to where I started the row here. So when I pick up my bead, and I go through the next bead sticking up. Don't try to cheat and go through this bead here. You need to go through this bead. This is our last bead for the row. So if we skip one, go through one, it's this bead here, okay? So I'm gonna go through that bead. Now, if you are a experienced beater, you know that you can actually go through this bead and your step up bead at the same time. So, when I do my step up, it's this very next bead here. This is the first bead on the row, so I go through that bead. So, now you can see what I mean when I say each row that you do, your step up bead is going to move over one bead because here's where I started. The next row step up was here, and now this current row step up is here. So, again, all you have to do is pick up a bead and go through the next bead sticking up. So I'm gonna work this row, adding my beads, so that when I come back around, I can go over that step up one more time with you. Okay, so you can see here, I'm to the end of my row. I am coming out of this bead. If I skip a bead and go through a bead, it's gonna be this bead here. So again, remember, don't go through the first bead of the row. We have to finish out the row, which means we have to go through this bead here to finish the row. Now remember, I said in a little while ago, my more advanced stitchers will know that if I want to, I can finish the row and do my step up all at the same time. So it's completely up to you and what you feel comfortable with. But you can see now we have more rows complete. Okay, so. If you are doing one solid color, you will slide your piece all the way down to the bottom, just like I've done here. 
and you will continue to add rows all the way until you reach the top of your piece. So if I take the top off this other one here, you can see that there is beadwork all the way up to the rim. And that's how far you want to go. So if you have actually are going to follow a pattern, your word chart or graph will tell you when to stop. But if you are just doing one solid color or you're gonna make up your own pattern, just know you have to stop right there. Okay, so beadwork all the way up till you get to that point. Then we are going to completely get rid of these threads so that we can finish out the bottom of the body. To start doing the bottom of your piece, we're gonna make it into a completely separate component by itself. And then we are gonna connect it to the body of your piece. So again, you can see it sort of looks like a star. I learned this specific technique from um, Rita Sova. She is on beadpatterns.com. Um, that's how I learned to do this bottom part right here. <clears throat> so, when you finish your completed body, you will see here that you have your teeth sticking up at the bottom. So, this is important. You're going to definitely want to have those kind of exactly like I have this here. Now, I'm going to use multiple colors so that it'll be easy for you to see what I'm doing. You will want to use one solid color like I've done here on the bottom. I'm only going to use, again, four colors so that you can see each row that I'm going to do. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up six size 11 delicates. So for either one of these, I could use whatever color I want, but it would be best to use like the chartreuse color here. So I'm gonna pick up six, so two, four, six. And I'm gonna bring these down and I'm gonna go through them again. Now this is really important that you do not tie these into a circle. If you tie them into a circle, what's gonna happen, your beadwork is gonna be so tight, you're not gonna be able to get through the beads and you're gonna have a really hard time um, making it look nice. So again, do not tie these threads together. So I'm coming out of one bead. I'm going to thread on one bead and I'm going to go through the very next bead in the circle. And when I do that, that bead will kind of pop into place like this. And I'm going to do this five more times, just picking up one bead and going through the next bead here of the circle. And again, you want to pop it into place. So again, this is why it's so important that we don't tie these threads together and we leave them to where the center can kind of loosen up if it needs to be. Okay, so now I'm down to one more bead and so I go through the very next bead, which is gonna be this first one that I started with here. So when you do, this is what your piece is going to look like. Now we have to do the step up. So the step up simply means I'm gonna come through this first pink bead that I added on my row. This row, we're gonna add two beads at a time. So I'm gonna pick up two beads and I'm gonna go through the very next bead here in my circle. So those are gonna kinda of sit a little wonky to each other and that's okay. It'll all come, as, as uh, Miranda Lambert says, it'll all come out in the wash, so no worries. Okay. Now you notice I'm not doing anything with this tail thread yet. And again, it's because I don't want any of this to get too tight as I work. So you just kind of have to hold that tail thread out of the way for a couple of more rounds. So when I finish the row, I have to come through the last little single bead here of the row. So it's gonna be that pink bead here. And again, remember, you're using one solid color. 
If it helps, you can definitely do it in two colors or multicolors or whatever you want. But I'm just doing this so it's easy for you to see what I'm doing. So to do my step up, I'm gonna step up through the first size 11 seed bead of my first set of two here. So I have my two beads and I'm gonna go through just that first one. Now I'm gonna thread on one 11 and I'm gonna go through the very next bead. And then I'm going to thread on 111, and I'm going to go through the first bead of my set of two. And I'm going to continue this around my piece. So pick up one and go through the very next bead. Whoops, and I picked up two there. Let me back up and take one off here. There we go. Okay, so pick up one and go through the very next bead. Pick up one and go through the first bead of my next set of two. And these are not gonna sit like you're used to them sitting, where, you know, they're gonna be nice and in a perfect round circle. You're gonna start having points and it's gonna look a little funny and that's okay. It looks exactly like it's supposed to. So don't, don't worry about that. and it will get tight as you stitch. So now that I have got one bead left to add here, so I pick up my bead and I go through the first bead that I started with, which is gonna be this one here, and I'm gonna go ahead and step up through the next bead, which is gonna be the first bead that I started this next round with. So if you can get through both beads at once, great. If not, go through them one at a time. Completely up to you and what you can do here. This last bead will be a little bit hard to pop into place. And at this piece, you're, at this point, your piece won't lay flat. It'll be kind of wavy and that's completely okay. That's what you're supposed to have. So no worries there. So now we are gonna pick up 111 and we're gonna go through the next bead sticking up. So I'm just gonna come back over here to my purple bead again and I'm gonna pick up one and go through the next bead. Do this all the way around, just picking up one bead and going through the next bead. So you can see I have one bead left to add. So with my one bead, I'm gonna finish out the row by going through that yellow bead. And then I'm gonna step up by going through the first purple bead that I added on the row. So I'm gonna go through both those beads at one time. So the next row is gonna change up again we're gonna thread on two 11s and go through our next purple bead. Okay. Then we're gonna pick up one 11 and go through. 
Now we're gonna do a repetitive pattern here. Two, one, and so forth and so forth. Okay, so when you do it, some of these are gonna stick out and you're gonna feel like, okay, something's not right here, but it's completely fine. You've done everything exactly like you should. Just pick up two, one, two, one, and work your way around the piece, adding in your beads. So two, one, two, One, two, one, two, and then our final one will be a single bead. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the last bead on my row and then the first bead of that set of two. So again, it's gonna look like a hot mess, but I promise you this next step is gonna fix what you need fixing. Now before we go any further, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take another needle and we're gonna get rid of this short tail thread that we had in the beginning. So I'm just gonna go ahead and thread my needle. Now these needles that I'm using here that kind of have the red tip, these are by the Beadsmith Company and these are their color eye needles. They're nice needles to use, but the only problem is the concept um, did not kind of continue on through, I guess I should say. Um, they made them to where the tops are all different colors. So that way you'll know like red is a size 12, say black was a size 10 or, or whatever. Um, but if you use it the first time or even the second time, the color comes off the top. So unless you are an experienced beater, then you have no clue what size needle it is. So that is why that has a red top. So see, just what I've been using it here today in the video, you can see the red is almost all gone. So that's the only problem. So now we're gonna take our little piece here. And again, we have all of our little teeth around the edge and we're gonna take our new piece and we're gonna lay it down on the bottom just like this. So we're gonna start a zip up process. Now it doesn't matter kind of where I start here, um, but I'm just going to, you can see I'm coming out of this first bead and I'm gonna go through any one of these beads that are sticking up. So I'm gonna go through just this bead here that's sticking up. Then I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna come through the very next bead here. So of my set of two, I'm coming out of that first bead and I'm gonna go through the very next bead. So that when I pull that, it's gonna kinda, that new green bead kinda pops in between there. So now I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go through the next bead sticking up on the body. So it's gonna be this bead here. Okay. Then I'm gonna go through the next bead sticking up here along the edge which is gonna be my little pink bead here. And you can see now how it's zipping up. So I'm gonna go through the next bead sticking up on the body. And then when I come to my set of two beads here, I'm gonna go through the first bead of the set of two through a body bead and then through the very next bead of my set of two. When you get that pulled through, then you're gonna go through, and even if you kinda have to hold it up like this so that you can see what you're doing, I'm gonna go through the next body bead, and it's just a continuation, and each time, I'm just gonna go through the next bead sticking up once on the bottom, once on the body. And then when you get to your set of two here, 
Remember, we go through the first bead of the set of two. Then we go through a body bead. And then through the very next bead of a set of two. A body bead. And a bottom bead. And as you pull it tight, you can see now how it's popping each of those beads into place and making kind of that star shape. So we're gonna continue around, just doing what we're doing here to get our piece completely connected together. The biggest thing, make sure you don't skip any of the connecting beads here or you will see it and it won't look good. Now, you will be doing a solid color. Again, the reason I did multicolors here is so it would be easier for you to see how that connection happens. And as you start to really get it connected, you're gonna notice that the beads almost automatically kind of go ahead and lay together so there's not too much thought that you have to put into it. So it gets a little bit easier as you go around. So once I've come all the way around, I'm gonna know because you'll be clearly be able to see all your beads are connected and you can see here, this was where I added that first little bead. So I'm just gonna go through that first pink bead of that set of two to finish up the row. If you can get through it, it's gonna be awfully tight. Okay. Well, and if you can't get through it, no biggie. So that now your bottom piece is completely connected to your body beads there. So you can see how that is going to look and you can see how different it looks using multiple colors compared to just your single color here. So what I'm gonna do now is at this point, you are gonna tie off this piece completely. Tie this off and get rid of all your threads. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do my single color base and go ahead and get this connected and then we will be ready to move on to the next step. So now that I have the bottom complete on my piece, um, some of you may find that your piece is not tight enough, okay? So I am pulling with all of my might here and this is not sliding off. So if you don't have a problem with your piece sliding off, then you're fine. If your piece is a little loose, you can slide it down. Now don't slide it off, slide it down and put a very thin layer of E6000 glue, just a little bit on a couple of sides and then slide it back up. That way you won't have to worry about this ever coming off of your piece, okay? So again, if it's a little loose, you can use your E6000 glue to glue it on here. So that way you do not have to worry about it coming off. I actually had to do that on this one and you can actually see the difference where the drew, the drew, Lord help me, the glue has dried here. You can see um, where I've used that glue. So that's just a little bit of a difference there because this one was kind of loose and this one is very, very tight. So now you're ready to do the top part of your needle case. 
So the top is made exactly like the body. The only difference is instead of starting out with 36, you are going to start out with 40 and you are going to do 12 rows. So a lot of people ask, how do I count the rows? When you do peyote stitch, this is how you count your rows. You start on a lower bead and you count at a diagonal. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. So you just count your beads at a diagonal. So I have 12 rows here already done on my case. Okay, this is the top part that I'm doing right now. And you can see now 36 versus 40 because the top is that much bigger. Now, once you have your top complete, you have your 40 beads, you've done your 12 rows of peyote stitch exactly like this, then you are going to do one more row of peyote using this same color that you're doing. Now, you can definitely do um, any sort of pattern that you wanna do on this. I've kinda got to where I like to do the tops in a plain color. But you can do, you know, whatever you want. And if you're doing a plain color, that's fine. You know, no worries. So you're just going to work one more row off of what you've got. The reason that I don't tell you to do 13 rows of peyote is it actually adds another uh, row that has two beads. So when you count up this way, um, instead of having 13 beads like you need to, you have 14. So that's why I don't tell you to do just that one more row from the pattern because the pattern actually changes it. So you're going to put in your one more row and then you're going to need some size 15 seed beads. Now at the beginning, I forgot to tell you size 15s. They just completely left my mind. So you are going to need a few size 15 seed beads. So um, that's going to be what we're going to be using here in just a minute once we actually finish with this part. So when you do this extra row, at this point, you'll see that it's, it's bigger, your beadwork is bigger than your top, and that's what you want. Now, if you wanted to, you could definitely do something similar to how we did the bottom here. It's just um, not going to work out as good because it's a bigger number than your 36. So to me, this is a fun and different topper that you can do for your needle case, and it gives it even more character, I should say. So I'm almost here. And you wanna be careful when you pull that you don't pull this up any further and it's exactly where it needs to be. So I'm gonna finish my row and do my step up and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna test it to make sure it's where it needs to be and it is now before i go any further this is loose my top piece is a little bit loose so what i'm going to do i'm not going to pull it all the way off okay i'm just sliding it up a little bit here and i'm going to take my e6000 glue and i'm just going to put a little bit of glue here around the edge this will be very helpful when you get ready to finish it off because that way when you twist it you don't ever have to worry about it coming off so then i'm going to kind of do this again slide it the other way and i'm going to do it a little bit here around the top okay so again it's not much it's just enough to hold it in place and we do not want to do this with a quick dry, quick dry glue because if you do it with a quick dry glue, you're going to see it. It's going to turn white in between your beads. This is going to dry completely clear. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a small layer of E6000 glue here along the top. Just like this. And this is what we're going to use for... Our cabochon. Now I'm actually going to use a color changing cabochon for this one. So when we do this, now we are going to set it directly on top of our piece. 
Now, when you get it glued on, this is what it's going to look like. So, this is using one of the color changing cabochons. If I was to use a cabochon like this, it would fit even better and it would kind of use up a little bit of my space here. So now this is where your size 11 or your size 15 seed beads are going to come into play. So we're going to do a round of 15s, just like if we were to use them as our 11s. And each stitch that you do here, you will want to pull it nice and tight. Because we really want it to start pulling over our cabochon. So if you're using a 14 millimeter that's domed a little bit bigger, this will start really laying on that cabochon. This one, because it's not domed as much here, you can see, um, it's not going to start really laying on the cabochon yet. The next row that we do of our 15s will start laying on it. Putting that layer of glue guarantees that no matter what happens, that cabochon is not going to come off. But we are also going to just kind of stitch it into place and help everything stay. It also helps when you put that little bit of glue under the cabochon. It helps it as you're working this row and the next row so that you don't have to hold it in place as you work. So that's really nice too. And using the E6000, it will dry completely clear and you don't have to worry. You can go ahead and just kind of start working on your piece and start feeling instant gratification that you are getting this piece completed. So when I come to the end here, I put my last 15 on for the row and then I go ahead and do that step up into the first 15 that I added in the round. Okay. Pull it nice and tight and now you can see where it's kind of pulled it and kind of used up some of that space that we had there. And so now we're gonna do another row of 15. So we just pick up a 15 and go through the next 15. And we're just going to do this all the way around, just like this. And you can see now how it's really starting to hold that cabochon into place. And it gives it a different look than besides just having some seed beads, um, or yeah, some seed beads on the top of your piece like we have on the bottom. It's going to give it a fun, different look to it. And um, I really hope you'll take my advice about using the E6000 glue on the top here because when I was working on a needle case a couple of weeks ago, um, I showed some of you on my social media page, I was working on this one and she doesn't tell you to glue the top, she tells you to use double-sided tape. And the first time I pulled it, I completely pulled this off and I had a heck of a time trying to get it back together. So I ended up gluing that into place so I wouldn't have to worry about ever pulling it off again. So that's why when I did this one, I was like, yep, put some glue there. Make life a little bit easier to deal with in that aspect. So now those 15s are laid over onto our cabochon. It looks really, really nice and finished here along the top of our piece.
and you we didn't have to worry about any sort of encasement because the wooden holder was basically our encasement for it okay so once you finish this row you have this top part complete now you can see it's completely laying down onto it if you feel like it's not tight enough you can go through the beads again and not add anything but I'm pretty stoked about this. Now, one thing that I am going to do differently, I just grabbed some 15s that I had. I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna put some lime green 15s and then I will be right back so you can see the difference in your color that you choose to use too on the top. All right, so I started putting the green in and I didn't like it, so I changed it to purple because I thought, well, got a little bit too much green. So, what are you doing with purple? So, here's what we're going to do next. You should be coming out of the top, and I will tell you, because this is flatter than what I have here, um, I went through these beads again. I did not put anything in them. I just went through them again, pulling it tight, so it really laid down on that cabochon. Now, I'm going to stitch down to exit any one of our little teeth or our upper beads here along this bottom edge. So it's one of those things, it doesn't matter how you get there as long as you get there. So if you wanted to, you could definitely take and just kind of come in an up and down motion all the way down the row if you wanted to. Um, if you wanna go through, you know, two or three beads at one time, like in a diagonal like this, it doesn't matter as long as we don't see the thread. You just want to come out of one of those beads. So now that I'm coming out of the bead there, I'm gonna add one row of 15s. Just kind of pulling it tight as I work. This will help finish out and pull everything together and we'll, you know, just make everything look better. Look good and look better. You can see there what a difference that's already making in the look of the top. Again, I'm not pulling, you know, adding tons of things. I'm just adding this one row. And if you want to, you know, just double check to make sure that it's gonna be a good fit. And you can see that that's gonna be a really nice fit here. So you really don't want too much. See how, how there's hardly any overhang here. You just barely see the bead sticking up when you put it to the side. That's what you want. So once I get the row complete, then our piece is finished and we can tie off the thread. So this is the last bead there for the top. And I love how this topper came out. So now it just comes to the point. If you want to, you can go through and reinforce that row again. There's no real need to or reason to though kind of completely up to you and what you want to do but now I'm just going to sew through and get rid of some of this thread here
And you can see I'm just sewing through different ways so that it all kind of crisscrosses together and I don't have to worry about it coming loose. Now I will trim this off and I have my new completed needle case there with my 14 millimeter cabochon on the top. So you can see, again, there is a size difference there in those cabochons, but that's what it will be like using a smaller cabochon versus a higher cabochon there. So it's a really lot of fun to make and customize these. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make these fun needle case covers. Now I do have the patterns on my website for both the needle cases that you see here. I have the patterns on my website off the beadedpathbeadstore.com. Now the pattern itself is 11 pages because in your pattern packet, it's going to have your word chart. It's going to have step-by-step -step instructions on how to do the top and the bottom. And then it's going to have your big um, bead chart if you would rather follow those. Now, I also have, for those of you who want to design your own cases, I have in my free section on the website. So if you go under step-by-step -step tutorials, there's a whole section for free. If you go to that free part there, I also have blank graph paper where you can design your own cases yourself. And again, that is completely for free. Now, I did want you to know that coming up November 27th and November 28th of 2020, we will have everything on our website 25% off with the coupon code HOLIDAY, H-O-L-I-D-A-Y, HOLIDAY. So if you go to www.offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com, add everything you want in your cart and use HOLIDAY at the checkout in the coupon code box, remember to hit apply. It will take off that 25% and um, you will be able to get that great discount. Now that does include patterns like this. So you can um, grab that on Friday and Saturday at the 25% off price. Um, we also have the, um, the needle cases on our website for sale and the first 25 people who place orders um, when the clock rolls in from Thursday night to Friday morning at midnight, we are going to start the first 25 people are going to get a wooden needle case, a pack of size 10 needles, and a printed copy of this. So if you place a physical order, which we will mail out to you, the first 25 orders are going to get a wooden needle case, a pack of needles and the pattern. So I do hope you'll take advantage of that. Now, Cyber Monday is coming up as well. On Cyber Monday, um, all of the patterns on our website, all of our instant download patterns will be half off with the coupon code HALF, H-A-L-F. And that's coming up on Cyber Monday. So guys, I thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you next time and happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.